How are you doing everybody? Jonathan here. And in this video, I'm going to go over three unhealthy habits that personal trainers tend to practice regularly. As I've seen this in a number of personal trainers and fitness professionals, and I've experienced this myself very early in my career. And this is something that can derail your momentum as a fitness professional, as it can erode your energy with your clients and thus cost you money, sessions, business, whatever the case may be. So I want to encourage you to be mindful of these unhealthy habits that a lot of trainers tend to engage in before it hurts you. Now, before I do, remember, if you have not yet, make sure to click on that link up there and subscribe to my newsletter as I send out short articles every Monday on how to see success in the fitness industry. If you just happen to stumble upon this video, make sure to click on the YouTube icon right there and subscribe to this channel as I make videos every Wednesday based on questions that I get the most. And as always, if you've already subscribed to both my newsletter and to this channel, thank you very much for your support. And if you find the information helpful, please click on the like button below the video player because every like that I get helps this channel. Now, um, you may be thinking these habits are related to eating or are related to drinking. And yeah, there is a place for that. You know, there are trainers that may eat a little bit too much or drink a little bit too much, but these are more unhealthy habits that trainers engage in while in the effort trying to be the best trainer as possible. I have a boot camp, and believe it or not, I have a lot of trainers that take my boot camp. One in particular happened to be taking my class last week, and she had just come from training her client, and we had just finished the workout. She had a strong performance like she normally does, but at the end of the class, she looked like she was about to pass out, and she really didn't have her bearings. It took her a while before she like got herself together, and then it helped me to realize some of the things that she was continually doing as she recently started her own business that may be hurting her. So the number one thing that you want to try to avoid the unhealthy habit as a personal trainer is going to be doing constant turnovers. Constant turnovers is a turnover is essentially when you work late into the evening and then you work again early in the morning. And this is going to wear you out as you need sleep. I don't think people understand how much emotional energy in addition to physical energy is required in order to be effective as a fitness professional. And if you're constantly burning yourself out, doing your last session at nine, only to have to wake up at 4.30, as that is not uncommon for personal trainers, it will catch up to you. And you'll get irritable, you may be short with your clients, and then eventually these clients may think that it's them. But really I understand that trying to get as many sessions as possible but you have to make time for yourself to sleep. Only you really understand how much sleep and how much energy you need to be effective, but you have to understand that if you have a long day ahead of you and a long day behind you, you can't continually do that to the body because you'll wear yourself out. The second unhealthy habit that a lot of trainers engage in is living off of bars and shakes. I went through, when I was a personal trainer, I would work 5.30, 6.30, 7.30, 8.30, 9.30, 30, all the way, one hour sessions, all the way through, 12.30, 1.30, and I know that's not uncommon for a lot of fitness professionals. You know, you take a couple of hours off and then you're in from 4.30 to 5.30, 6.30, 7.30, 8.30, and then you don't even have time to go to the bathroom, much less sit down and have a real meal. So what are you reaching for? You're living off of bars and you're living off of shakes. And while those supplements do have a place in a nutritional program, they're meant to be that, supplements. They're meant to be an extension of an already robust and full fitness or nutrition plan. And if all you're doing is eat, listen, these are not real foods and they're not made to sustain you by themselves, all right? So you need to learn to make time for yourself, whether it's cutting out a session, you know, long-term, you're doing your body good. You're giving yourself more energy. You're filling yourself with better nutrients than just constantly putting processed foods, whether they're clean or whether it's whey, whether it's you know whatever brand, it's not gonna replace fruits and vegetables. So you wanna make sure to give yourself at least two to three real meals per day. It doesn't take that long to do so, 10 to 15 minutes. If you can give yourself an extra 15 minute block in between clients, or if you have a client that tends to be long-winded, you gotta let them know, hey, as important as it is for you to eat on a schedule, I have to eat on a schedule too. We have to cut this conversation short because my next client is coming. We can pick this up later. So definitely make time for yourself to eat. Now, the last unhealthy habit that a lot of trainers struggle with, and I even struggle with this at times, is stressing over the lack of uh, success with your clients when it comes to weight loss and fat loss. And I understand that it may be hard to hear, but 
I tend to take it very, very personally when my clients don't see their fitness goals. And it's usually a case where I give them instructions, they're supposed to you know, walk it out, I give them as much accountability as possible, and they simply choose not to do it. So when it comes time for them to do measurements or weigh-ins, they're shocked, they're upset, they are crying, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm doubting myself, I'm wondering, you know, what am I doing wrong? I like hate doing measurements sometimes because for the people that really don't do what they should be doing, they make the biggest um, commotion out of not seeing the results that they expected. And you can't let that bother you because at the same time, you know, I did my last round of measurements about two weeks ago. There were equal amount of people that did really, really well as opposed to the people that did not so well or poorly. And they did the exact same workout. I have them on this exact same style of monitoring where they all are operating off of different meal plans but I'm monitoring the same way daily off of my fitness pal but the people that see success are the people that follow the advice and the people that don't see success are the people that go rogue make up their own rules and do whatever they want so that stress again will weigh on you you'll start to doubt yourself you'll start to have less confidence as a trainer and then ultimately those clients that are doing really well they may not even get the attention that they need because you're focusing it to other people that aren't even following your guidelines. So you can't let yourself get overly stressed out. The client's responsibility is to listen to what you tell them. And if they don't, nothing's gonna undo it in a day or after one week of being upset for measurements. It's a long haul, you have to explain this to them up front. And if they don't quite get there, you have to be okay with the fact that you're doing a good enough job. So that's really about it. Those are the three things. They're not you know, egregious things. Those are insidious habits that we fall into as fitness professionals because we try so much to help as many people as possible. We're trying to make a living and it tends to weigh on us. But if you let it weigh on you too much, it's going to hurt you as a fitness professional. It'll hurt you long term. It'll hurt you physically, emotionally, and mentally. So make sure that you understand your place in your client's role and your responsibility to yourself to stay healthy because if you do, I guarantee everything will always work itself out. The clients that aren't ready to dedicate themselves or to see success will kind of wither away. The clients that are ready to will either change their habit or will continue to work with you. And people that are understanding of health and fitness will understand that you can't always burn yourself out, that you can't always live on shakes and bars, and that you're a human too. So don't be a robot. Make sure that you take care of your body because that is your number one asset as a fitness professional. And if it's broken, you will be able to serve others. So, I hope you found this information helpful. I wasn't really technical, not really dealing a lot with exercise, but it's something that I saw, especially with this one client, and I was just thinking, man, she's just overdoing it. She's got too much on her plate, and she needs to take some time for herself. So maybe this is the case with a lot of you out there. Make sure to put yourself first, because you can't be a help to others if you're not a help to yourself. So take inventory on what you're doing for your body so that you can help others, and I guarantee you, you'll see more success. I'll be back next week with more information. Remember, if you find this information helpful, comment below. Your comments tend to inspire more videos, so the more questions you ask, the more videos I'll make. But I'll definitely be back next week with more information as long as you remember to eat healthy, hydrate, drive safe. Stress levels all get rest. Don't slap anybody. Love your clients. They'll love you back. I'll see you all tomorrow or the next day. And you have a good one.